Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to showcase my asset, the Immersive Template, available now on the Unreal Marketplace. Link is in the bio below. The purpose of this template is to be a starting point for building out a game with immersion as the focal point where the character can interact with the objects in the world around them. I have a series of foundational functions built out that I'll be showcasing in this video and some of the customizable settings. So the first thing I want to show are the dynamic objects that the player can pick up. In this area, there are boxes placed at low, mid, and high points. When going up to each of them and pressing the E key, the character picks them up and dynamically plays the appropriate animation based on their height in relation to the player. So it's between high, mid, or low animations. These are children of the main object blueprint. So when making your own objects, you'd either want to duplicate an existing child or make a child of this parent. Each object has a variable named animation struct and clicking on it shows all the default animations used for dynamically picking up and putting down the object. Hand IK is set up to work out of the box, and in the showcase level, most of the boxes have two hand IK set up, but they don't have the right animations in place for demonstration purposes. This was done intentionally so that you can see how the hands will bend incorrectly if you set hand IK to active, but aren't using an animation that matches the active hand IK. So for example, the left box here is using two hand IK, but if you look at the montage for the low pickup, it only has the right hand reaching towards an object while the left hand is idly pointing down. So by activating two hand IK, you have both hands going towards the box, but the left hand is still facing downward because the animation has the left hand hanging. I hope I was able to explain that well. Um, this is the case for each of these objects, and there are two ways to solve this issue. So one is to place animations using both hands, or two, it's to change the IK setting to the hand that's used in the animation, which in this case is the right hand. So here's how you do option one. You open the blueprint for this object, show inherited variables if they're not shown already, and click on the animation struct. So let's set the low animation to two hand low and make sure you select the montage for the UE5 mannequin because both UE4 and UE5 are in the UE5 version. So now that it's changed, we can see that the left hand is rotating like the right hand. And from here, you can fine tune the other settings like the location or rotation of the object in your character's hand. Another thing, let's change the holding animation sequence to an animation using both hands. So now the character picks up the box with both hands and holds the object with both hands all smooth. So by default, I've gone and made the offsets for the child objects already in the template, but your own object will obviously have their own settings to appropriately fit in the mannequin's hands. I want to point out that once an object is placed down, the offset is going to be affected. So this is something I'll be working on in a future update. That way the object will always be held in the same way. Okay, so now let's fix the IK using option two, which is to change the IK to right hand. And let's also change the socket to hold underscore R since our animation is using the right hand. Also, all three socket names are capital H hold underscore capital R L or the number two for both hands. Okay. Now this middle box is using right hand IK only. So the left is no longer bending and we've changed the socket. So the box is being held closer to the right hand instead of where it is on hold underscore two. From there, I've gone and quickly tweaked the offset so it looks a bit better, but you know, you could fine tune this to your own desires. If all of this with the IK is more of a headache and you just want the dynamic pickups, you can uncheck the use IK and then your character will perform the same pickups and put downs 
but without the IK. You can also put down objects, but I'll go more in detail about that in just a little bit. Another thing about dynamics, say you don't want to use them and you only want one pickup and put down animation to play. You can set dynamic to false and the character will then only play the animation set here. This section right here is set up to show you how that works. So each of the boxes have high pickup and put down animations. So you can see that the character is going to play these higher animations regardless of the height of the boxes. Okay, so here is where I want to go over putting down objects, as well as the interactable mechanics. So let's first start with putting objects down. By default, the E key is used to pick up and place objects back down in these locations. If you haven't noticed, when in proximity of these locations, they'll glow blue, which means that you can place the object there. If an object has physics turned off, like these torches, when you place it into a location, the location will then have an object in place, and approaching that same location with another object in hand will activate a red highlight and play a sound indicating you cannot place an object there. The locations show a highlight of the object the character is holding, so if you put a box here and then are holding a torch, the location will show a red torch telling you that you can't place it there. So that's for objects with physics off. If physics are on, you can then place objects in the location, but they're gonna fall out and the location won't register it as an object in place. Thus, you can stack multiple simulated objects on one location. So another feature is the ability to designate locations for objects by clicking on the object and then in the eyedropper tool, and select the location that you want to designate. The object will then be restricted to only being placed in its designated spot, and it will highlight red for everywhere else and gold for the specific location. I basically had the idea in mind that this is a key object only to be placed in a key location. You can then also disallow the object to be picked up after you place it down, so the key item here can be picked up and placed over and over, but this torch on the right cannot be picked up after it's placed down. Another thing to note is that you can also rotate the locations so that the object you place will face the arrow of that location. So that's putting objects down with the location. There is also the ability to release objects from hand directly in front of the player, and there are even more interesting things that you could customize with this as well. So let me try to explain it. This torch is not set to simulate physics, so placing it in a location with E will hold its place. However, releasing this object with the two key, that logic is still gonna hold. So I, I don't know about you, but it could be a little jarring to just have it floating there. So under the extra settings, you can check this variable that activates physics only when it's released. Now, this variable hasn't been perfected yet, but I'll explain what it does with the parent open so you can see it in real time. So right now, it doesn't have physics. I release it, the variable is set to simulate physics when released. So here's what happens. Once it's released, the event tick is turned on and it's checking for the object to completely stop moving. Once it does, if simulate physics is set to false, then once it stops moving, the physics will stop being simulated after a certain amount of time and the object will resume not simulating physics. However, the hiccup is that if you pick up the object before it has stopped moving, then the physics are still going to be applied to it when placing it down in the future, even though physics are technically turned off in the variable section. It's not until you release it and let the logic fully play out will the physics turn off. Okay, so that was locations and releasing, but you can clearly see that the item is a torch, and I've added the ability to light this torch with the one key. Granted, the mannequin is burning their face off with the flame, so you can swap this out with your own particle effect. Now, the logic for this occurs in the immersive component that's attached to the player, so let's open our character blueprint. 
So the only thing I've added to this character are these input keys, where E is the basic interaction and 1 performs the secondary interactions on the immersive component. So double click this event and it'll take you to the component blueprint and this is where you would include all your custom events based on your objects. And here's how it works. The one key is pressed and the secondary interact event is fired, which activates any of these functions afterwards. We can see drink and torch are activated. However, the events check for the tag added to the object that's held and will only fire the logic if that tag is recognized. So the torch has the torch tag and so when the one key is pressed, the ignite torch event is launched for both igniting and extinguishing the torch. Essentially, you would make your own custom event here, use the same logic that checks for the tag, and add that function here in the secondary interact chain. Okay, so some extra stuff I added was a cup that has its own tag and interaction added. This is very primitive. It doesn't have the check to keep the player from spamming the button, but it's a great starting example of how to make your own. Another interactable object is the key card and the automatic door that checks for the key card amount in the player's possession. So the difference between these two key cards is only one thing, it's the consumable variable. So by default, objects are not set to consumable, so this key card increases the player's key card count by one and then it opens the door when the player's in range, but as soon as they place it down, they don't satisfy the requirement anymore. The consumable function increases the player's card count when they pick it up and then it frees their hand, allowing them to pick up additional objects afterward. One note to make is that if you pick up a key card in front of the door and it doesn't open right away, it's because the player is in the door's range when picking up the card. And so they have to leave and re-enter the door's range so that it can recount the player's card count. Okay, so the final aspect of this template is the ability to sit in and out of chairs. This template includes three types where the first is a smooth animation in and out of it, the second isn't really immersive as it's more of a teleporter, and the third is where the player pulls the chair out and sits into it, and then does the same thing when getting up out of it. The chairs use these hidden cubes to determine the player's location, so where you move them will also move the player. The third chair has a glowing green cube that will determine the hand placement of the IK when moving the chair. The chair by default uses the right sided animation, but I have made the left sided version here where I just move these cubes to the other side and change the animations and the hand IK enum. So that's all of the template for now. It's very bare bones, but it's foundational enough to build off of. I've already began working on additional mechanics that I plan to include. And I also plan to include much better game ready animations and meshes. This build was focused on getting the core logic created, and since I finished most of it, the newer mechanics are being completed fairly quickly. I also added this little demo section. It's very basic, I know, but it's a simple example of one way to use the locations and interactions in a little puzzle where the player sets this torch in this location, and if the torch is lit, the hanging staircase will drop down. One weird thing I've randomly seen is sometimes there's a lag after you place the torch down and like if it's lit, the staircase just like has this weird delay and then drops. I'm not sure what causes it, uh, it happens like once and then just stops. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video uh, helpful and informative. I'll make more tutorials on how to build things out with this template in the future. Anyway, that's all I have for you. I will see you all later.